If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of Mind Pump. So we uh, we didn't highest. really have any direction with this episode, so we just kind of went for it. Uh, we started by talking about Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon <laughs> and popular dance. Seventh now. Movies. Podcast. We talked talk about Adam and Justin's fake ID shenanigans and how I... Basically, didn't party that much when I was a teenager. Oh. Kind of boring. Dork! We talk about Justin's <laughs> college and bartending experiences and things you can no longer get away with. Uh, you know, back in the day, we used to get away with a lot of things. Today, you just go to jail. We were animals. Yeah. Uh, we also talk about training your legs. Uh, there's a lot of, we get a lot of messages from men and women. A lot women. of myths around this one, man. Yeah, and people are like, you know, my legs just don't respond. I'm, I'm working out real hard. I'm getting real sore. So uh, we talk about that in this episode, and then what we did is we actually created a guide uh, just for you guys, right? This is a guide for people who want to develop their legs, and what we did in this guide, and it's free. There it is. Is we uncovered the three biggest myths and what you can do, just three things you can change right now to get your legs to respond. Now it's free. If you go to mindpumpmedia.com, go to the Programs tab under Free Resources, Click right there. You'll see Skinny Leg Guide. Click on it, and you get it for free. Uh, we also talk about uh, the gym industry and our history running health clubs. Oh, man. Yeah, fun. Oh, the good days. Fun, Storytelling. Fun, fun episode. Also, get the No BS six-pack formula for free this month if you enroll in any MAPS bundle. Bundles are where we take multiple MAPS programs, put them together, and discount them. 20 to 30 percent off. That is also found at mindpumpmedia.com. Foot loose, kick up Sunday shoes. Please, yes. Louise, yes. pro me off my knees. Oh, and you're doing the foot move, Jack. <laughs> you remember that? Get back. Come on before we stack. I don't know. I, don't I thought you make word, up that last part. Yeah, I did. I did. Yeah. I, I love that movie, dude. Yeah. Did you really? Oh, Obviously, it's such a you know what's group. funny is you do love that movie because you're not a big like you don't remember specifics about trivia, but you just did the exact <laughs> foot, the exact move. Footloose yeah, dance. I did because when Footloose opens the movie, Kevin Bacon, and I guarantee you, ninety percent of our audience is like, huh? That's because you're not old. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, when the when the movie do starts, some homework. When the movie starts, the beginning is just feet. In yeah. the intro, remember? And right. feet it's, dancing. That, it's that song that he's doing right there, and they're doing the... Yeah, there's all kinds of different foot moves. Uh-huh. All the different yeah. sneakers. What a great uh, Kevin Bacon. How about this? He's in everything. He, he is. He really is in everything. Remember they came, Remember they created that, uh, what's it called, Seven Degrees from Kevin Bacon? Yes. Yeah. So, and then he keeps penetrating new markets, whoa. right? Have, oh, okay. yeah. have you ever tried to play that game before, where you try and think of an, an actor, and you 100% can get connected to him within seven people? Somehow. So, is that is that how it works? So is the way you, science he used that? to not be involved in like superhero movies, and then of course he made his way into X Men. No, he what did he do in X Men? Remember, he was that one in the the earlier X Men movie. I think it was a prequel X Men movie where he was like the guy that uh, absorbed he absorbed the energy and then like pushed it back. Had like this nuclear power. No, I don't remember that. Uh, yeah. I don't remember. Yeah, the way, I, remember I remember his name. The but. way the it's either six or seven degrees from Kevin Bacon. I don't remember what it is, but yeah. the way you do it, and you can do this. There's a whole like website dedicated to this. Mm-hmm. You'd Google like six degrees from Kevin Bacon. If you put in a name, like think of a, an actor that like for sure probably has never acted with Kevin Bacon. You put that name in, and within six people, it'll get to him. Yeah. So he he's maybe never acted with Kevin Bacon, but he's acted with Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman's acted with Brad Pitt. Brad mm-hmm. Pitt's acted mm-hmm. with so and so, who's then acted with. Mm-hmm. Oh, there you go. Oh, there it, it is. Yeah, yeah. See, you know, best movie it's ever six, did. It's six degrees. <clears throat> six degrees. Wild things. Yeah, you don't need that seventh degree. Yeah. Apparently, you can connect right to Bacon. <laughs> wild things. You can go things? direct to Bacon. What, yeah. is, what is Wild Things? You don't remember Wild Things? I thought it was. Uh, I never watched that. Uh, where the where, uh, what's the river one that he does? Oh yeah, yeah. I love that movie. That's actually. a good movie. Yeah, What's yeah. the River one? What's I have new? no idea. You know, now that, now that we we're River talking Wild? about it, no. the eighties had a lot of, in the seventies too, like dancing movies. You know what I mean? Yeah, they're not that many anymore, are there? Yeah, like the seventies had Saturday Night Fever. Sure, there is. Now it's a uh, Stomp oh, Yard yeah. and Step yeah, It Up. What are we talking about? But they're not, but they're not popular. Like they, they what do you mean they're not popular, popular? dude? Seven, <laughs> Saturday Night Fever was a phenomenon. Right. Footloose was huge. 
I don't. I can't think of any. What are some other? I oh, don't know. Dirty Dancing, Dirty Dancing, massive. Yeah. What else is there that are dance movies? What are good Grease. dancing movies? Grease. I don't know. Grease. Great movie. What a great movie. Yeah, I can't think of any newer ones that uh, are really big that are I think you, dancing. I think, I think we just sound like a bunch of old people. I think we just don't watch dance movies anymore. Yeah, like, I love stomp them. Stomp the yard. I'll watch them all day. Don't they have like yeah. Chanum Tanum yeah, guy? Yeah, they have doing all the, stuff. Those are all popular. Magic Mike. Yeah. I do. I do you think though that they're as big That's comparatively as like as Footloose and Saturday Night for Fever the time? And, I think. I think, think th- so. Yeah, I think there's some. I don't think so. Really? No, dude. Uh, what's we call it? Uh, what was that movie we just said with Patrick Swayze? Yeah, Dirty, uh, Dirty, Dirty, Dan- Dirty Dancing was, and it's still to this day that shit stood the test of time. Hmm. You will not find a woman. Young woman, even young girls, you know, even even girls in their teens. If you say, "Oh, have you seen Dirty Dancing?" Oh yeah, it makes me cry. Well, wasn't the whole premise that like dancing in some communities was like taboo, and it was like you know, and then they just like did it to rebel. You know? That's so, what that movie. So was. now it's like that's that people all, laugh at that. That's yeah. That whole movie. It was a town. Yeah, it was a yeah. town with a preacher, a bunch of Puritans, or who uh, who made dancing illegal because you know. Uh, yeah. Doing that will no, definitely nothing's illegal. That'll right. definitely stop the kids wanna, from having. You want to hear the okay? You want to hear the sixteen? Listen, I'm going to give you the sixteen greatest all time dance movies. Here it goes. And just so you know, in the top five are movies today. Yeah, but are these movies just, ranked in terms of the dance? Uh, I'm talking about popularity. That's what I'm talking. That's what you're, it about, is. you're about to burst. His, I literally googled the, his the thesis. Yeah, the top most, grossing. Most yeah, no, I didn't say grossing. The most popular, right? So uh, here you go. Just listen to them. Uh, Dirty Dancing's number one. Uh, okay, boom. so so your argument's fair. There, there you go. Center stage. I don't even know what that is. Peter Gallagher. What is that? Yeah, that's all wrong. Okay. Center stage. Number three is Black Swan. Number oh, four. Okay, that was right. true. Number, that was good. Number right. four is Step It Up. Number five <laughs> is You Got Served. Oh, You Got Served. Number six is Strictly Ballroom back in 1992. Oh, Flashdance. Seven is Flashdance. Girls Just Want to Have Fun is eight. Mm. Footloose is nine. Mm. Honey is ten. See, at least five of these are Yeah, in but the- those aren't- I don't think save the last dance. These wait, are all which one was flash dance. Okay, here you Your go. Your theory is just way out. Off. No, it's about you got. I'm looking at. I'm looking for top grossing. Not just like I feel like that's somebody who's into dance. Who's like these are the best dance movies ever. Uh, yeah. You might not have heard of some of them, but they're great. Like pop culture, like change. Yeah, like they they actually you know things. change shit. Right. What? Yeah. The, what the fuck does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> like fucking dirty dancing changed our fucking it world. Did, oh, bre- oh, breaking. Remember breaking. Yeah, Breaking was awesome. Nineteen eighty four, New York. Was it? New I just York want to Ugly? point out that you're fucking dead wrong on this, dude. There's more. There's more shows that are now. Most than, of them are from the eighties. I'm looking through these right now. Would you no count way. House Party in there? You got yeah. you, the, the kid and play no. doing the. You got served. Nah. Step up, Black Swan. All those movies are all step it up. Those are all now. Oh my, they they actually they actually put Coyote Ugly in this list. I'm looking at Staying Alive was good too. Do you guys remember Staying Alive? You guys didn't watch that. I bet. I bet you. Mm-mm. You didn't, huh? Mm-mm. Did you watch Saturday Night Fever? Yeah, I watched Saturday Night Fever. So Staying Alive was John part Travolta. was part two, and what happens with John Travolta? So John Travolta's character in Staying Alive. I'm just gonna give you a little breakdown. Wow. You you watched part two? That's commitment. Well, let's see here. Italian dude. Yeah. <laughs> Gets lots of chicks. Okay. Yeah. First time I Wears saw this. Bell bottoms. First time I ever saw Saturday Night Fever, yeah. uh, which, by the way, was that movie's way was before I was born, but the first time I watched it, I was thirteen, fourteen. So I was in that 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 tender age of awkwardness where you just want to yeah. identify with something. Did you ever grow out of that? Yeah, and that really high voice. You're no, just I'm drawn still, to it. I'm still there. Hey, you can't <laughs> hear by the way I use my walk. Exactly. Yeah. So like, this I is, this is it. I was home from school one day, sick. And I'm flipping through the channels, and there's Saturday Night Fever, and it's this, it's fucking John Travolta, and he's just a badass. And I'm like, I, I feel like I'm John Travolta right now. <laughs> and so after that, I can do that jump, split, kick thing. Yeah, that's that's when I started wearing like, yeah, and then you know I started yeah. wearing leather jackets and shit like that because I'm like, I'm a New York Italian. How about the best dude who can dance? How about the best none da- of those things? Dance I think you should have stuck with Rocky, like the single best dance scene, because that's where I could see Dirty Dancing is up there with that. Like really, the single best. dance It's not that good if you watch it again today though. It was, you know what I mean. Have you? I haven't watched it in years. It's like I, this, like little arm shuffle and then like point thing. And no, no, he's talking about fa- he's talking oh. about uh, the, uh, what dirty dancing. Yeah. Oh, dirty dancing. Yeah, no. Yeah. How about risky remember. business when Tom Cruise? That dance scene's pretty sick. That's, every every boy slid in into his room on wood floor and socks and naked, half naked, and danced on his couch or was your, your little tidy whities Tell me you did not do that at least once. What am I? In a, in a no, what's, down what's shirt? nice is when you see a girl do that. That's that's great. Oh, can I just yeah, that's the hottest thing ever. Before, can we yeah. just talk about that for a second? Mm. Sexiest thing ever. Girl who wears your shirt, nothing else. Yes. You know what I mean? Where it's just 
Thank just you. long enough. I got a tall sock. Just long you got to bring that back. You like girls with tall socks? I do. Yeah, me too. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. yeah. Tall socks and little shorts or no shorts. Oh, man. Thank you. Yeah. Damn it. My <sighs> girlfriend right. wears that shit. What Does she? We, She's we not wearing that around you guys. Fuck <laughs> that. She has a bunch of fucking animals in here. Hey, did you guys... <laughs> <laughs> God damn, uh, God damn it. Uh, I'm off to go see JT tonight, dude. Actually, I actually haven't no seen No way. Yeah, I've passed on him like- You three, just call him JT? bringing sexy yeah. back. Yeah, that's how we are. You know what? Justin so Timberlake- I called him up, said, hey, can I get some seats? I got you. Oh, wow. He's going to be on the show later, right? It's like that. Yeah. Maybe. God damn it, Adam. <laughs> Can't count on you. <laughs> Come on, Justin man. Timberlake. Deal. Justin Timberlake is- uh, the real deal, man. And you know what? I really started I liking hate him. on him, dude. Me too. To, that, you know, that, I that curly ass. He perm. had my girlfriend. Come on, man. Brittany. Yeah, dude. He banged her before you. Yeah. yeah. You know what I like about? Just uh, jealous. You know what I like about him? When I when I really started liking him when he was on uh, when he started doing comedy SNL. like on, on yeah. Dude, I there was that's a, when I was like no what? The, dick the, in the box dude, is what changed my whole changer. perspective on him. Yeah. <laughs> I hated I him. One hundred percent. No, yeah. <laughs> Dick no, in the box changed I, my life. Pivotal moment. I seriously <laughs> didn't listen to any of his music. I hated on him because he was in a boy band first, and then he was dating the fucking girl that I had a crush on. Yeah. Totally hated. When he did Dick in the Box, changed my whole album. Like, this guy's fucking cool. Yeah. All right. If you can make fun of yourself he like that it. and do something yeah. hilarious like that, and then after that, I've always been Have a fan. you, raise your hand if you've ever done the Dick in the Box thing to your girl. Just me? Wow. <laughs> I thought I was going to get everybody to raise I their mean, hand. Like, for real? I was like, this is a good idea. You literally cut- you know, uh-huh. a little, little hole. And no, I didn't do it. We were you in, think I am? When we were in high school, there was on, this guy. this uh, big lineman, and he had a big popcorn. Old, he had a big yeah, old slong, yeah, right? He, he had a what? He had a big slong, right? He had one of those. Shlong. He had one of those limp dicks that were still like seven All inches right. limp. You know? How'd you wow. know? He was just show everybody. Well, and the party, he, he just throw it on the table. No, <laughs> he, he put it on a hot dog bun and put oh my ketchup God. and no, mustard. No, he didn't. In. Yes, and he walked no, around. No, he didn't. You've actually seen somebody do that? Yes. Why? That was in Bachelor Party. Remember that movie with Tom Hanks? Oh no! I it didn't, was. Yeah, I didn't know that was in a movie. He had like a that happened in my real dog. life. He actually, yeah. he actually put, <laughs> he put, he put, <laughs> he actually put condiments on himself. Mustard? Yes, he put a, he put his dick in the bun. He put ketchup and what mustard on it. And he walked around the party asking people if they wanted a hot dog. Oh my god! Did he have other hot dogs at least to kind of distract no, from no. the one things no, just long, hanging on to one things hot, that wow. wouldn't fly today? today. <laughs> Go to jail today. Like, Back then it was what? like he's so funny. I like relish on my. Don't you guys remember like high school party tricks like that? People would do no, weird, crazy shit. No, like, just, no, 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 Adam. No, yeah, no. I I expect that from Were you. Were there Justin. girls at the party? Well, there was guys <laughs> that would just take their <laughs> fucking pants off. Just, ah! But, I did that, but usually it wasn't impressive. You, you know, know what I mean? mean? I wonder if this is like this is like repressed sexual energy with teenage boys. For you know what sure, I mean? yeah. We're like, ah, I'm gonna show. Or my it was like a my... dare or something. Yeah. You know, just like get too drunk. Like, yeah, dude, I'll take. Yeah, I'll put my thing in yeah. a bun. We used to do. Stu- <laughs> I remember when we were in a Ho- we were at a Hawaii trip, right? For, with our uh, it was graduate. We just graduated high school, and there was like ten of us. You guys. went to Hawaii for high school? Mm-hmm. For high I school. thought you were poor. I was. I know, How the hell did you do that? that was, well, I, I by high that. school I was making money. Remember? Oh yeah, you were working. Uh, yeah. Damn. Yeah, so, That's cool, man. Yeah. It was. It was only six hundred bucks, right? But that was six hundred bucks was you know a lot of money for a kid. You must have tripped out traveling like that. Was that the first time you ever did a big trip like that? You know what? And now that you say that, it might have been. So how funny is it's crazy how much we fly today? I just take that for granted that yeah. when I was a kid that I never flew anywhere. Mm-hmm. I flew Me one. Either. I flew one time when I was really young. My mom flew us to Utah right after my father passed. So that was seven years old and then you know what sal i think the next time that i flew anywhere was to hawaii fuck man that's crazy wow and you did it yourself yeah with a bunch of high school buddies you should be proud of yourself so anyway tell us about this trip so we got uh so when we first we're all underage right so we get to hawaii when you get to hawaii as a high school kid and this is like teachers and shit are there or is this just you no and we went through with one of those you know like invasion or one of those uh companies that puts on like that they do this all over. I've oh yeah, me, yeah, 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 yeah. You guys have heard of these? Yes, you? I have. It's like a high school trip or whatever. It's kind of like, a, but and it's a little bit but your it, chaperone. Yeah, but yeah. it it isn't just for high school. It's actually for like out of high school. Like you have to be. Um, well, you don't have to be eighteen because if you're if you're under eighteen, you have to get approval from your parents. If you're over eighteen, you can go. But it's typically like the seventeen to twenty one year old range. Mm-hmm, like that's mm-hmm. you that that go on these trips, and they do Cancun, they do Hawaii, they do like uh, Jamaica. And I think like a Florida trip, or like the, they do like five. And then, yeah, they have like these supposedly chaperones, but they're like 25 year olds. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so yeah, it's yeah. like it's like a bunch of 25 year olds party with partying with 17 and 21 year olds. So, yeah, we went on this trip. And as soon as you got off the plane, uh, there was like people coming up to you and handing you these little cards 
for you to get fake IDs. And so we went and got our, everyone went and got your fake IDs. And so funny, God, I've never told this story on the, on the show. You just Here reminded me something funny, right? So how, how great is this? So there's, there's 10 of us and we all, we all go get these fake IDs. Now, mind you, these fake IDs, I think cost us like a hundred bucks. So trip already costs a lot of money. I think each of us kids maybe have two or $300 tops. Maybe if you're one of the rich kids to spend for a whole week, in Hawaii, right? <laughs> And we spend the first half of it on fucking fake IDs because, of course, we got our priorities <laughs> yeah. straight. So, you know, and you're you're hella nervous and scared. You're when you're that age doing something like that because you know it's illegal. Uh, right? uh, this is illegal. It's wrong. Yeah. So, you know, we all wait in this line. It's like this back alley place. You're like, goes, is this a trap? Oh, this, totally. Yeah. We're we're all like kind of watching like each other's backs. Like, is this is you know someone else going through there? They're okay. Okay, we can do this. So we do it right, and we all. Totally the McLovin one. Oh, yeah. it's hilarious, right? Yeah. So, and you you have choices like I think Oregon, Colorado, Virginia. Um, there's like there's Washington. There's like ten states that have like back then had cheesy IDs that were easy, easy to make fake. Yeah, yeah you mm. know California. You're not getting a California fake ID. These are like they're just busting these fuckers out, mm-hmm. right? So we all like go pick our own different state, which is stupid too, that we pick different states and we're all friends, right? So that yeah. was already a stupid, st- yeah. like we're all like, oh, I did Oregon. Oh, I did Washington. Hey, you man, fucking we're dummy. pen pals. And we're all yeah. Hang- yeah, we're all yeah. hanging out together, right? That wasn't very smart. So no. that was the first stupid thing we did. And then we all, so we're all sitting around and we're all sitting around our hotel room and we're looking at our cards and each guy's going around like, oh, I'm from Virginia and I'm from, you know, what, one, two, three, butthole street. And like, we did all these like stupid names too. Like, that was really <laughs> stupid. yeah, stupid, right? And everyone's <laughs> such bad planning. Yeah, everyone's going around, right? And they're they're talking about where they're from, their street name, and then how old they made themselves. You know, some guys made themselves twenty five, some guys twenty three, right? And we get around. It's my best friend Justin. He'll love this if he's listening. And he's like, "Oh, I'm from Oregon, this and that." And he's like, and you see him start counting with his fingers. Fuck. I made myself 20. He's like, because <laughs> it was that year. He made a fake, a he was fake tr- ID that didn't work. <laughs> so oh, no. he, he didn't do the math right. So that year in October is when his birthday is. And here we are in, it's June or July or whatever what month it is, right in summer. And he made himself turning 21 on his real birthday. So he put his October birthday on there and he did the math wrong and he was, uh, Fuck! I'm only 20. I don't turn 21 until. Oh I'm my god! Was, we fucking died. It was the funniest. Did thing they ever. work though? Did you end up using them to go drink? Oh yeah, yeah. No, they they worked even when we came back to. So no, and then you used them here. Yeah, when we came back as kids, I used that. I had a Virginia ID. That was what bought my alcohol as a. Yeah, I had know, a Nevada one. It, did it you? Was like, you had yeah, a fake ID. It was hilarious because it was like you know the skin tone was you know you know how white I am right yeah yeah it's visible so it was like <laughs> I, I had like. It was like a guy that that kind of, sort of, like could pat. He had like a nose, kind of like mine, but like he was like visibly Indian. Like he, he was not. He, he was, was not a white Indian. person. He was not a white person by any means. And uh, I don't remember his name. It wasn't like you know. It, it wasn't super ethnic, but it was like <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know how the like. I went to one bar, and I, and I and she knew. She knew. She gave me that look like, really? Like, are you serious? <laughs> but she liked me. And, and I, I just like would just keep paying her for drinks and like giving her tips and stuff. So she just let me like stay at this one bar. It didn't work anywhere else. But yeah. Sal, so, totally you didn't like, have a fake ID? Never. How did you get alcohol as a young kid? I looked old. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, yeah dude. Bro, you didn't I have was to shoulder tap or anything? No, I, you know, and you know, I didn't go out. I didn't go to a lot of bars. The you didn't main, do any of that stuff. Not really. The main bar I went. It's remember, very important to building character. You got to remember this. Yeah, man. I was just working hard, managing gyms. Oh, <laughs> no, yeah. Yeah, you yeah. got to remember. Listen, Busy. Keep, that, keep that in mind. I was nineteen and twenty when I was when I was having these big gyms. As my well, what first. about it? Like sixteen. And so, what about sixteen, seventeen, and eighteen? No, were, no, no, no. Were you so, not drinking? No, I no, I wasn't drinking at all. That's when I was doing heroin. So I wasn't. Oh. I wasn't. Yeah, I wasn't in that. No, I'm, wow. all the basic no stuff. I, how can you be that productive? I didn't. I, I didn't do anything. I didn't drink alcohol at all. V- barely any when I was uh, at that age at all. I might have tried it here and there, but I never really got drunk. I think the first time I ever got drunk, I was eighteen, and that's because my at the time my general manager, who good friend of my mentor. Thanks, buddy. Uh, he, he brings some alcohol to the club and it's like 11 o'clock at night and we start doing shots. And, uh, this is one of the many lessons uh, I had with alcohol where I learned <laughs> you got to give it a second, let it hit you first. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Cause I'm just, so your yeah, first your time, ex- your first experience of getting drunk was like with, was a, with shots, w- with work and, and, uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 
Wow. Yeah, yeah. Like not even beer? You went straight to hard alcohol? So did, when you yeah. were when you were in wow. high school, did you not go to high school parties? No, not really. Oh. I mean, we threw some here and there, yeah, but not really. No wonder high school yeah. was very memorable for you. Yeah. yeah. It was boring. No shit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. So what did you on the weekends when like all the cool kids went to like a party and stuff? On the weekends? I was working out, <laughs> reading, <laughs> learning. <laughs> Yeah. Look how much it's paying off there now. There you go. I know. Right? Right? All, so, you yeah. put the work in. We yeah. could have we could have another one of you guys here. <laughs> <laughs> we could have plenty of those assholes. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we were talking about. Uh, no, but uh, no, I didn't do any of that stuff at all. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Do you ever look back and think feel like especially because you and I both didn't finish college either? So do you ever feel like you kind of missed out on that? You know, I used to. I used to think of that, but you know, it's because TV. And movies glamorizes mm. the college life so much that you see like, like oh fuck, I wish I was part of a fraternity and it would have been so crazy. No, the reality is, if I went to college, I would have had to go to junior college first because I didn't have the money. Then I would have gone to state college. I probably would have lived at home. It would have been an extension of high school. Yeah, it would have been that was yeah. my experience. You know what I'm yeah, saying? State, That's how I was at college. But, but exactly. when you watch the movies and shit, you're like, I, I feel like I missed out. And then I did. I got married real young, you know. Mm. But I did have a stint where. Before I got married, I da- I moved down to uh, Palm Springs area because I, I bought a large share of a, a large club down there, and I was down there for almost a year, and that was pro- that's why I did a lot of partying down there. Because how old are you at that point? I was 20, 21, oh, 20 okay. or 21, 21, and so I moved down there, and that was the first time moving out of the house, and I mean, but... Th- I still worked my ass off. It was crazy. We would get to work at 8 a.m. We'd work till 10 p.m. Then we'd party till 2 or 3 and then just rinse and repeat. And and uh, I no, I don't know how I did it. I don't know how I had the energy to do it. Did you have was, a, much yeah. was that the only phase or time in your life where you felt like you probably kind of were just like crazy working hours, drinking, partying? Were you doing that a lot or was it just like a little bit? Here? I mean, compared to how I you know did things before, even now, like even now, if I want to, if I had all the time in the world to party, I would still not do it very often because I find it's more enjoyable when you kind of save it and do it when you feel good and then, you know, take care of your body, feel good and then do it again rather than I did. I, there were de- definitely periods of time where I party, 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 but then you start to feel shitty. So I still, I still kind of, uh, what's the word? Um, titrate it. So I definitely titrate it still to this day. And wow. I did it back then too. Wow, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like those were some good times for me. I College was that big. <clears throat> yeah. Well, you actually went to a good college, though, and you played sports, too. Yeah. I mean, it was like, I mean, it's overrated. Like, you you can you can party and not go to college. I mean, it's really not the place to, like, spend a bunch of money, you know, and waste your time uh, partying. But it did, it did help to kind of get that out of my system. I think that I needed a little bit of... What do you think was your favorite part of going to college and your least favorite part of going to college? My favorite part was um, just being independent. And having no responsibilities and figuring shit out and figuring out like who I was. Well, you had a responsibility. You had to go to class. You had to fucking. He's comparing it to now. Kind of. (laughs) You're you're comparing. Dude, that was not like you just. I mean, you kind of rolled into class. Yeah, but when you're then, I bet you didn't think that way, right? Like when you're a kid, Mm -hmm. you think this is like you. You got oh, fucking homework is so daunting. I got to do all this shit. I mean, it was like when I was full time. When I was like in in season for football, it was tough because it was just time management you know like it was they consumed pretty much the majority of my day like in the morning and at night so it's like everything in between was just studying and then I actually even squeezed in you know maybe like four or five hours working at the bar so I was just like a fucking I just that was where I really learned time management and so that definitely as far as like a life skill totally applied you know from then on out. When you were at the bar were you like a bar back were you actual bartender? Yeah, I was um, first. I was a server, then I was a bar back, then I was a, a bartender. So you actually did. How long did you do bartending for? Um, just like maybe a year and a half. So uh, that's I, still a decent amount of time. Yeah, we just and we we just did like cocktails, like we did a, a martini. So it was like a martini bar, and so it was like a set order of maybe like twelve or sixteen types of drinks. Do you, do you think? Fl- do you get flirted with a lot? I was just going to ask if you. I was just going to ask if do you think that this is? Do you think your you know, uh, talking to girls' skills where it got developed was oh, massively there. increased there for sure. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, because it 
you're in a position of just like power. You, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I have the I don't want to say that, but <laughs> like it's they they're sitting there trying to like drum up conversation with you at the same. So it makes it easy because you're just like you just have small talk, and then you know they hang out and they get more drinks in them. They feel more courageous to like ask you like really off the wall questions and. You know, so I got used like, to like, hey, hey, are you wearing any underwear? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like they, they would flirt, like the, the flirting would start, but then it would escalate. Those are real questions, Sal. You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they'd say that to him. Yeah. <laughs> they do. Uh, you know why? Because he's got all the drinks and stuff like that. You know, girls go in there flirting, course, hoping dude. they get some free they shit. They want dude. free stuff. And, yeah. And, you know, and so, yeah, that I'm sure that contributed. And then, you know, it was interesting because I, I used to have these guys come in that were from an Audi dealership and I befriended them and everything. I had no idea that they had all these like mafia ties and everything. So oh, shit. I was like, you know, it's met a lot of interesting people and interesting characters. And like I had mentioned a long time ago, like I was terrible at small talk. I was just like, I had my friends and that was it. And like, if you're another person, I just would give you like, you know, real like short answers for Did everything. you, did you sleep with girls at the bar or was that like a, not okay to do that? <laughs> Like in the like bar, yeah, there, like, yeah, like yeah, on yeah. location, yeah, yeah, like literally on location. There was a lot of shenanigans going on. I, I have buddies, bar, bro. Dude, I have buddies that are skirting the question. I know uh, he's skirting the question. That's why I'm asking it because I have buddies that are bartenders, still to this day, bartenders. And yeah, yeah, that's that happens, dude. It does. Mm -hmm. There's, there's, it happens in gyms booth, too. There was this one booth, it was like a uh, booth 54, I think. Whoa, yeah. oh, that dude. was the one that memories was like, don't bring the black light. You don't, yeah, you don't shine that in there. You don't want to sit there. So damn, yeah, it was, happens. It happens in gyms too, dude. I, I'm guarantee you guys have caught people having sex in the gym. Yeah. Oh yeah. You have right. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. I did. Cy cycle room. You know at the, at the at the at the at Hillsdale they there's that there's a way you can get up yeah. like upstairs okay, to the so roof. You, and, yeah. 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 I caught. I caught. <laughs> I so my on the roof, bro. So I didn't know that. God, man, this like one of the. There are situations where, you know, you have an employee and you like them, but they make a stupid mistake and you're like, God, you know, I have to talk to you about this stupid thing. It was the fitness manager that worked uh, that worked for me. I'm not going to say his name because I know there's people from 24 that listen and will know who I'm talking about. But he, one of my other staff members went up to the roof for, to get something, comes back down. They're like, hey, so-and-so's up there uh, with a girl. And I'm like, what do you mean with a girl? <laughs> you know, like he's having sex. I'm like, like oh. He's, like he's training his things. He's training his client up there. Yeah, and I'm like, what are you doing, dude? So getting fresh, a, if, fresh air. That's what I would tell Sal if he was the boss and he came and caught me up there. I'd be like, oh no, no, we're just doing uh, burpees up here. Yeah, we're doing burpees. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> getting some vitamin D. So oh, I had to talk to him. Noise. I was so angry with him. He comes in my office and I sat him down. I'm like, listen, dude. I'm like, I'm like, I'm not mad at you for what you did. <laughs> I'm like, I'm mad because you got caught. You're dumb. Why would you do it there, you idiot? Find a better play. I was yeah. like so angry that he got caught doing something so stupid like that. Yeah. So angry. That's the only time actually I caught somebody. I don't know. When did you have you? I want to hear some stories. Uh, well, I had trainers that I busted that in the way I found it, I actually didn't catch them in the act, but it was happening on such a regular basis that they had created like this little, little mini bedroom. So back, what? yeah. What? So at so at Santa Teresa, <clears throat> if you go into the cycling room, that's where it was. Yeah, if you go into the cycling room, you can go uh, back and around like where these the this like little fenced off gate that wraps around this corner, and it opens up to a room almost the size of this room right here, and they had sectioned off. They had just put like these false walls up, and it didn't look. If you just looked at first glance, if you walked around the corner you and peered, in, you couldn't tell. It just looked like shit was back there. But if you walked all the way through and then you walked past this little partitioned wall that they kind of put up, there was like this little bedroom that they had used. They took a bunch of mats that had been laying around and they had <laughs> made a mat. Oh, dude. So it, you walked back there and you saw this and you oh, knew what it was. Oh, yeah. I knew right away what it Did was. Did you know who it was? I had ideas, but I yeah. wasn't for sure. So I had a... I'm, I'm, so I set up a hidden I camera. one of the front desk uh, girls and one of the sales guys in there. Yeah. Time. Yeah. No, it was the spot, right? I was like, Wow. I, I made it clear to my uh, staff. Continue, I'm out of here. So to my my trainers and stuff like that, I was very clear that like don't don't not let me catch you back there with somebody. 
Yeah. I don't know who set that up. I don't know who's going back there with there. It's obvious what that's back there for. Yeah. So do not let me catch you doing that. But yeah, no, that was someone something that was. Going yeah, on gyms there. are interesting environments. They're it's very There's a lot of energy. It's, nope. ra- it's you, rated. It's rated. Uh, it's either it's it's always one or two with hospitals. Yeah. For uh, well, because you got beds at, at hospitals. Wow, hold on a second. Hospital suit. You work in, in gyms. And your wife worked in hospitals. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, and we're both professionals. You found How did that happen? <laughs> you found each other. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, uh, God, and I think of some of the stuff we did back then, and I wouldn't be able. There's no way you'd be able to get away with some of this shit. Like, you know, one of the first things I did as a, as manager of Sunnyvale. You want to hear a funny story? Which for sure, no HR department in the world would have allowed me to continue working there after I did. There's no way. But I get there, and uh, it was on a weekend. It was a, right when I was given this this flagship club. And I pop in on a weekend when I'm supposed to have these guys running the weekend for me. And I like, I used to, especially when I first run a gym, I wouldn't tell them I would do this, but I used to work every day. They didn't know that. So I'd pop in on the weekend to see what's going on. I walk in and I'm like, where's my sales? Where's my sales staff? Can't find them. So I'm looking around, can't find them. And at the the old Sunnyvale, I don't know how it is now, but the sales offices were up at the, there was a, you had to go up some stairs. So it was like another floor. And then you could go up onto the roof there was like this little door. So I walk out to the roof and there's my sales guys and they're all smoking weed. So they look at me like, oh, fuck. So I look at them and I kind of nodded my head, walked back inside and locked the door. Oh, and, yeah. yeah. And out they stayed on the roof all day, all day long. And they were and so members were coming in and they were like, hey, there's some guys on the roof telling us to like call the fire department because it was all hot and shit up there. I'm like, no, they're going to stay up there till later on. You know, and, it's and so sweat it out. You know, and then when I let them in, I let them in. They, I sent, I said, don't come back, go home. You know, it's so mad. You know, it's bullshit. Is that we live in, we live in an era now that you couldn't punish your staff like that. I think that's a great way to punish. Them. <laughs> oh yeah, they learned it's, something that day. It reminds me of the, yeah. the the duct taping the phone to the ear. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yes. dude, don't do yes. that. Right? I mean, it's like you know, you're not gonna make your calls today. I'm gonna fucking duct tape that shit to your head. <laughs> <laughs> but it was so, so old school. But the environment like it allowed that, I guess. And you, I don't know, you develop a certain kind of respect and. It's old. It's old school. There's no way you could get away with some of that shit. No. Well, I'm I'm no watching way. I'm watching Katrina's company. So she works for a, a huge you know construction company or concrete company, <clears throat> but they do everything and they do all the major Facebook, Google, all the big campuses. And watching her go through this uh, growth transition of they were kind of like the good old boys, like literally. You know, they've got thousands of employees. Yeah. Majority of them were all men, construction workers. There's, you know, everybody has tequila or whiskey in the drawers. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's very like Mad Men style. And right. like the shit that you, the way you talk is like super inappropriate. And a bunch of sailors. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If, if an employee's like messing around or not doing work, like they'll just in front of everybody just talk shit to them. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like it's just stuff that you cannot do anymore. And she, they're, they're, you know, they're trying to go more corporate and she's a part of that wave coming through. And it reminds me of that wave in, in 24 because we were there before and then Mm -hmm. I was there also after. And it's a crazy transition to be a part of that. Dude, I thought I saw my general manager when I first, this when I first was working in this business, I saw him throw a calculator, like a ninja star into the wall. Like he was, he was stuck. Yeah, because oh, that's awesome. because we had a bad day in sales, and so he was ripping everybody. And this this guy is a good friend of mine still to this day. He was known for that shit. Like you piss him off, and like you wanted, to, you were scared, and he just hammered everybody in the office, and then takes the the, the calculator and whips it and throws it like a ninja star inside the wall. You would not be able to get away with that no. nowadays. No way in hell. No, but no. back then, that was the. That was the environment. See, even in like uh, athletics, like so, I had certain coaches that would get fiery, you know, and like they would want to use motivation and certain tactics to kind of like, you know, get everybody's attention. And I, I guarantee you can't do a lot of the stuff that I experienced, you know, back back in the day with a bunch of coaches. <laughs> like one time, one time, like we had just had a shit poor performance, and you know, he was just trying to make an example, and decided to take one of the tables. And just pick it up, 
and fucking slam it into the wall and it shattered like all over the place and then just was like and like punched a hole in the wall and then walked out and we were all like ah like i i was so scared dude i was like right in the front row i had no idea he was gonna do that dude like didn't didn't say much of anything it was yeah. just like is that how you guys want to do it no. <laughs> no by the time i became a manager it had di- it had died down quite a bit but still it was way different than what you would see now but i mean i would do like the bottom, like the la- like the the last place sales guy tomorrow has to wear balloons all day. I would do something like that, where I'd take balloons and I'd tie them to your pants, and that's it. Because you're last place, you get to walk around the gym now with <laughs> balloons on your pants, and people have to ask you why. Or, you know, we'd we'd make a big competition to bet, and whoever loses, you have to go put on women's apparel, and then you have to sell women's apparel, and you can only take off the women's apparel if you sell a hundred dollars of women's apparel that's amazing and you know what it was fun everybody enjoyed it but i don't you would never no of course you would never super offensive yeah you would never get away with that kind of shit and you know and sometimes and you know as a manager what i would do is when when people would give me grief over and be like oh man i don't want to do that are you for real i would do it with them because i'd show them it's not that big of a deal and i'd put on put on a sports bra and i'd walk around the gym and sell women's apparel (laughs) Not the first time. Speaking of women's apparel uh, and your booty shorts that you're wearing right now, dude, your legs yeah, are uh, sexy, huh? No, you're actually your legs look like they're they're growing, dude. They I are look, growing. Are they? Yeah, but you know, my, shapely. Uh, yeah, but you know, my 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 upper legs tend to respond uh, pretty well to, you, to working man. out, but it's partially because early on, I think I identified with my legs more so than anything that uh, frequency. Yeah, really your quads worked. blow up usually, huh? Huge, yeah. yeah. They, but you know, when I first started working out, my legs were so skinny that my knees were bigger than my legs. Yeah. So I had like, <laughs> so <laughs> basically picture a femur attaching to, you know, the bottom part of the leg. Yeah. That's what they look like. Yeah. And uh, I learned how to squat early on from these power lifters and I gained something like 13 or 14 pounds over a summer, got stretch marks on my ass and everything from it. Um, but yeah, you know, you see a lot of guys struggling Prove with it. this. I, no, you know, with, you see a lot of guys struggling. Well, legs, with this. legs is a. Uh, I mean, some. I mean, ev- some people have. Again, you know, we always talk about how genetics are always the, the first, right? Like mm-hmm. some people just have. I remember kids in high. There was kids in high school that didn't even train correctly, and they just had tree trunk legs. You know, mm-hmm. we had a running Justin. back, running back kid yeah. who just had these tree trunks. It and just then like happened. I was always the kid with these twig legs, and man, when I would train my legs. It would just, I would get dizzy and nauseous and it would, it took so much for me to try and get these things to stimulate and get any sort of response. What was the first mm -hmm. thing that you did that got them to respond at all? Like, did they respond at all when you first started? Because, I mean, not really, not really, to be honest with you. Like they didn't, I mean, very, very little. Like I was doing, I wasn't doing squatting. I wasn't squatting. I was leg pressing. It was leg pressing, leg extensions, leg curls. Mm-hmm. I mean, that was like the the go to three for sure for years. And the only thing that we would change with that is, you know, maybe throwing in some lunges in there, or adding weight, or adding more sets. You know, of those major, those three major exercises, and that was like literally all we would do to try and get our legs to grow. You know, when you think about it with a leg press, and I, you know, I know the leg press in not anymore. It's not like this anymore, but when. When we were into into working out, especially in the '90s and early 2000s, the leg press was considered like the one of the top mass builders for your legs. And in fact, there was a lot of debate back then. You, you won't see this debate anymore. It's not really a debate anymore. But back then, it was a debate. You would actually read muscle magazines, and it would say which one is better for leg mass, squats or or leg press, and they would try to make the argument. But if you really deconstruct the leg, the reason why I think people like the leg press, you can use a lot of weight. It's easy. Yeah, the leverage. And let's be honest, the range of motion on a leg press is shit. Even with the good leg press, yeah, it's not a deep range of motion. And if it's you ju- do go deep, that's bad news. Oh, people don't know that either. With a leg press, if your low back comes off mm-hmm. a little bit at the bottom of the rep, which it does for most people when they're going deep on it, you are you are putting yourself in a bad situation. Super you, vulnerable. Yeah, yeah, super. And I've seen more slip discs from mm-hmm. leg presses like that. than I, I think now. it's still, I mean, at least in, with my peers and the like men's physique world and shit like that, it's still a fucking dominant exercise. Really? I, you know, I always like come in the gym and I see my boys and I'm like, God, do you guys, 
stacking up 15 plates on the fucking on the yeah. on the lake. It's press. such a short range of motion though. Like, I'm like it's not even so, close there's to There's so squat. many there's different impressive about squat it. variations that you can do with a, a quarter of that weight that are gonna give you so much more leg to, and I didn't know this either though. I didn't yeah. know, you know what I'm saying? Like you 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 correlate the the burning and the pump and everything from the leg press, you know, that you feel to I must be growing. I mean that was as a kid, when I was first learning to lift and train, you know, the burn and the soreness was what I... That's your metrics. Yeah, that was all your metrics. It was mm-hmm. like, oh, that was a good workout. Oh, I've, I've got to be hopefully getting bigger and stronger because I'm sore, right? So that was like how you figured that out. And then we just, we would hammer the shit out of the leg press, hammer the shit out of the leg extensions and get a little sore from it. And I, I saw very, very little growth. And when we when we started squatting, it wasn't until I was pff, late 20s. Late twenties before well, I started to squat, and even when I started to squat, it still wasn't a regular thing for me because my mechanics were really bad, hmm. and my mechanics it's a skill. It is oh, yeah. all, all of it is a skill. <clears throat> yeah. I, you said something on the last couple a couple episodes ago, Justin. And I made a post about it, mm-hmm. and I started to cut you off, Adam. But I, I want to make this point that some a long time ago, somehow we started viewing exercise as just you got to breathe hard you got to sweat and you got to get sore and it really doesn't matter what you're doing necessarily as long as you get sore and you sweat and whatever and that's how people judge the workout Mm -hmm. and we don't judge any other physical activity that way there's no sport that's like i don't go play any sport and come back and don't talk about any of my technique or skill and just say oh i got sore i had a good day at soccer you know what i mean like with 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 resistance with resistance training we started. We stopped training it like a skill and just started treating it like a get sore and sweat. And that's where a lot of the problems come from. Because if you treat it like a skill, like imagine Adam, had you treated exercise as a skill from day one, imagine your progress. Oh yeah. You know. Well, I I see now what I mean, and my legs actually respond pretty well now. Like I used to think that I was. You're such, balanced now, definitely. I used to think I was this really hard gainer, and I was just was never going to have these legs because I would crush my legs. They'd be sore for a week, and then I'd hit them again. It was just like if I, I remember at one point getting to a point where I was just like, this fucking sucks because. I feel like this workout I destroy myself in to get like, and I'm still being teased by having these skinny. Legs. I'm not; they're not growing really. They're not; they're not responding the way I want. And then if I would to do would do movements like a squat, my low back would be on fire. My low back would hurt like crazy. And so I just kind of wrote that movement off completely. I just said, "Oh fuck it, I'll just mm-hmm. continue to leg press and do that." And to add insult to injury, there's articles that say things like, you know, if you're tall, squats probably aren't for you, and they make you feel like, oh, okay, I guess mm-hmm. I shouldn't. Well, no. T- that's exactly if anybody and that was kind of like my chip that i had on my shoulder if someone like if there was anybody who knew that squatting was good would say something i'm like hey you know you're also five five bro you know try being six three and squatting and see because it is i mean you have longer levers and there is more room for air mechanically Mm -hmm. and so you know it was challenging and it, it took me a while to i mean it took this i don't think my squat got really good until just recently i mean it wasn't until we started mind pump did I really start to really work on my squatting and deadlift mechanics? Mm. And I mean, now it's nuts. Like some, and and now what I do, which is awesome, that I have this tool in my belt that I just always had but didn't realize, never used it. Which is, I'll come to the gym some days and I'll just squat five to ten sets, and that's all I'll do. And that is what like a difference. And man, I, mean, I can maintain my legs right now are bigger right now than they ever have been in my entire life. I mean, they were bigger when I was competing because I'm not quite to that size right now. But my legs overall are are bigger than they've ever been in my life. And I really don't have to hammer the fuck out of them. I just do movements that really give me a big bang for my buck. I'll come in and I just the last time I trained legs was Bulgarian squats. That's it. Yeah. You know, like just mm-hmm. doing some Bulgarian split squats or front squats or, you know, back squats or deadlifts. Like those movements develop the legs so much that you don't got to freaking crazy hammer yourself. I think part of the reason why is the is that when you do them right, it's the range of motion. Mm-hmm. It's a long range of motion that you can't really get a, as well with with machines and there's other reasons as to why they're, they're, they're well with machines but, you can yeah. you it's leverage and you can cheat so much mm-hmm. you can't cheat as uh, something's sitting on your back 
You don't really have to stabilize it as much. No, you don't have to stabilize, and you can cheat. You can leverage. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You can let. You can. Your whole when you're leg pressing, what are you doing? You you grab the handles. You bear down. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Your back is supported and pressed against, it, and all that's driving is your legs out, and you're only going maybe you have half crutches the whole yeah, way. Through. Yeah, it's not. You're not having to work as hard, and just because you get a pump or a burn a little bit, you think, oh, it's working really well, but. If you knew that it was probably, I don't know, I, I'm just going to throw a number out there, but I'd say it's 50% less effective. Yeah. You know, maybe yeah, more. I would maybe agree more. With that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's interesting because I was, I was trying to think about that as you're talking about when you first squatted. And for me, I was actually fortunate because in our high school, we had a, a class that was a weightlifting class. And uh, just at the same time, I was doing morning workouts with the football team. And so, you know, of course, I just wanted to, you know, do something that was related to working out and exercising. And uh, so I, I was in this class at the same time. And so what was cool about it was it wasn't like an actual workout. It was like going through all the mechanics of everything. And so I had a, I had a, a college um, strength conditioning coach that came down to our high school and he's, he just taught like he was a, a PE teacher that also taught like weight training. And so he like instilled like really fucking good mechanics with me and i never even really like realized that because i i just practiced practice practice those moves all the time wished he would have taught me deadlift never taught me deadlift but he definitely taught me like overhead press and and uh he taught me like uh power cleans but um yeah that was like such an impactful thing if i wouldn't have had that like it would have taken me you know years to build off of it, it was my secret weapon for a long time as a personal trainer because with women with women in particular because, you know uh, everybody likes to have strong muscular legs but you know women really try to target their lower body and they have forever since i've been in fitness it's always been guys like to work out their arms women like to work out their legs and it was my secret weapon i'd get a female client and she'd be like, oh, my legs just don't respond. My butt is this or my, you know, they don't look good. And they'd be like, I knew it right away. But like, cool, we're going to squat. We're going to do lunges. We're going to do front squats. We're going to do deadlifts. That's the funny thing. And they never did those. And yeah. all of a sudden it was like, Poof, their legs responded. And See, it was like I put that together Boom. for my clients. How funny is that? Like, I figured that out early on in my early 20s. Like that, like I was, I used to call myself like the glute guy, you know, before fucking Brett Contreras came out. You know? <laughs> like I was the glute guy for sure. Should have trademarked it. Man. And I was no, I was known for that in our gym as being the guy who can help. De- and my secret was like all the squat and squat variations. Mm-hmm. Like that's, I train and a lot of women didn't squat and I teach, I would teach the squat and they would look, their legs would look incredible. Their mm-hmm. ass would look inc- mm-hmm. incredible from it. And everybody else were doing these stupid kickback exercises. And I was like, no, 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 no. If they're telling you that, these are the movements we need to do. And it was, but it's so funny that I taught that I knew how important it was because I saw the results of my clients, but then I didn't make it a priority of me. And I used the excuses for me. Oh, it hurt my back or, Oh, whatever. Like I always had these reasons why I'm not squatting instead of going, okay, this is really challenging for me. I need to, I need to treat it. Like you said, like a skill, I need to get good at it and figure out why I'm not. I wish I would have went down that path because, I mean, God, I, I have no idea where I'd be at now or how much easier it would be to maintain the, my legs. It's side. also, it's range of motion. Range of motion is a big one. Um, a, another game changer for me a long time ago, and luckily because I was into the the history uh, and uh, of muscle building, is I would, I would buy these books and magazines that were old, that would have old exercises that had fallen out of favor. And one of those was a sissy squat. And a sissy squat is a very uh, knee flexion and extension heavy movement. And, you know, flexion and extension is basically like a leg extension when you sit in a chair. But a sissy squat, you're doing it standing. But the thing about a sissy squat that I really liked was the stretch. Mm -hmm. Is I would do it at the end of my workout while my legs were, were pumped. And when you get to the bottom of a sissy squat, if you're strong enough, you can get a deep stretch in the quads. And then you come up and squeeze and, and you feel and, the whole quad. Being yeah, active. and I noticed with with exercise, this is true for the whole body. When you're working out the body, especially for hypertrophy uh, purposes, there are movements where the maximum the the maximum load is being placed on the contraction of the muscle, and then there's movements where you get a good stretch, and then there's movements where you get neither of those and they're kind of in the middle. And those tend to be the heavy movements, like a squat. Like there's no real stretch. Or you know heavy contraction with a squat, um, you you do get a little of both, but it's not like all the weight is on that like you would with a you know like if I did a fly right, you get a big deep stretch. Um, it's a mid range movement, but if I want to get a stretch on my quads, 
uh, sissy squat. I can't think of any other exercise that kind of does that. And if I want to get a squeeze on my quads, well, then I can do that with almost any exercise, but leg extension tends to be there. And when you include exercises that kind of hit all of those, you get you get better results. So hamstrings was another one. Hamstrings, you know, we, we were taught like leg curls. That's all you did for hamstrings, leg curls, leg curls, leg curls. Well, the first time I did a stiff-legged deadlift, mm-hmm. I had never felt my hamstrings like that, uh, ever. Yeah, uh, and when you look at the mechanics, the, the, <laughs> the biomechanics uh, of the hamstring and what function they, they do, mm-hmm. hip extension is more important than knee flexion. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, it does do both, but you know, you're going to get big-ass hamstrings from just doing you know, heavy hip extension type movements like a stiff, and you're getting that stretch, right? A lot of the load is in the stretch. Now, my hamstrings always got developed really well, and I never, I almost never did uh, leg curls. It was yeah. all deadlifts and stiff legged deadlifts. It just and those seems parade. more applicable, you know, like to function. Like, it is. is well, it, well, remember when I told the story about like deadlifting and then going to the, back to the seated row? Yeah. Remember that? Yep, yep. So I had the same experience with deadlifting going back to leg curls. So again, I told you leg curls, leg extensions, leg press, those were like very staple exercises for years for me. And leg curls, I mean, my hamstrings have always been very, very weak, even all, all the years of doing leg curl machine. And I I don't remember where I was at, but maybe it's like 70, 80 pounds on the leg curl mm-hmm. or something like that. Like that would be enough to get me really sore and was tough. And I remember when, you know, I started deadlifting, I completely eliminated leg curls. I just stopped doing it. I, I got so into deadlifting and some of this happened when, when we first started you know, training and getting together and I started deadlifting like crazy. And I remember looking back and it was the same, same type time frame or so. And I was like, you know what? I haven't seated row in a while. You know what? I haven't lied. I haven't leg curled in a while. Let's, let's go see, you know? And again, because I hadn't done it in a long time, I thought I was going to get on the machine and I thought that I'd have to start like half the weight. And of course I was expecting mm-hmm. that. Of course I haven't been doing this move exact movement. So I'm probably not going to be as strong. And man, I remember being able to do like double the weight. I mean, I spent years incrementally moving up 10 pounds Mm. on that machine. And I remember doubling it just from deadlifting and not having been incorporating that. And I thought, holy shit, that was, and I wasn't even, this is not even stiff like a deadlift. This is conventional deadlifting. Conventional deadlifting did so much for my hamstrings that it blew away all the work that I had been putting for years into that machine. See, that fucking blew my mind. This is why yeah. it's so important to to not pigeonhole yourself or put yourself in a box when it comes to uh, when it comes to training. It reminds me a lot of you know when I was doing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. This was probably ten, maybe it's got to be at least ten years now that I ha- that I, I stopped training. But back then, ten years ago, you know, I got up to a uh, purple belt level, which is a, a you know relatively high level. So after that, it's brown and black. And one thing that I would do to, to give myself an advantage over the other people in my, my classes was I would go on YouTube and I would look up other grappling arts that were not Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and I would look at some of their techniques. And, and there was a lot of carryover. You'd see a lot of techniques that they all did, but then you'd see techniques that you didn't see mm. in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. So I'd look up catch wrestling. Mm-hmm. Catch wrestling had all these neck cranks and all these wrist manipulations and all these different ways to apply submissions. Then I'd look at Sambo, which is a uh, Russian, uh, it's a Russian form of ju- it's like it's kind of like judo, but with leg locks, kind of similar, right? So then I'd look at Sambo and I'd see all these different kind of heel hooks and, you know, calf crushers and knee crushers and, and knee bars and rolling knee lock, all these different moves. And then I'd go to jujitsu class and I'd throw them on people. And because they'd never seen them before, because they were stuck in jujitsu land, I would get these submissions, and then they'd ask me, "Where'd you learn that?" And I'd be like, "Oh, fuck, that's a, uh, you know, I learned that from you know Josh Barnett catch wrestling, or I learned that from, and I'd buy these old books and stuff." So I treated jujitsu a little bit like I treated resistance training. Mm-hmm. Well, when it comes to resistance training, you know, most people that work out in gyms today are not. Uh, most people are not training for a particular specific sport. Most people want to improve the way their body looks. So most people, I could safely say, and I'm sure you guys will agree with me, are really interested in hypertrophy of their muscle, and maybe speed up the metabolism, get leaner. So they just want to be able to sculpt and shape their body. That's the vast majority of people that lift weights. It's just a reality, right? And so what they do is they look at, they, they put themselves in the box of hypertrophy and sculpting, which tends to be bodybuilding, tends to be bodybuilding techniques. Well, that's you, you are missing out. What you should do is look at all the different 
disciplines of resistance training, all the different strength sports, and then look at the exercises that are most valued right. within those sports. There's a reason why they have a lot of value. So CrossFit it did CrossFit did this. CrossFit took the best exercises or a lot of the best exercises from different modalities and put it in their training and then they blew up and people got great, you know, hypertrophy results from it as well. In fact, I would hear people say, "Oh shit, I got a better I developed a better body doing CrossFit than I did doing bodybuilding." Now the reality is they were doing shitty bodybuilding and then they did something that was a little bit more right. with better exercises. So it wasn't necessary, but it was just that they were trying more effective exercises. So I'm learning this right now. Like I, I keep learning this lesson. Like I'm doing zercher squats, heavy farmer walks, uh, you know, bent presses. These are movements that uh, strong men t- mm-hmm. tend to value. Like a zercher squat for a strong man is it's a staple movement. It's a staple movement because you know if you go to watch strongman competitions, they're lifting atlas stones and shit in their arms and so they have to be able to front load weight with their arms and then still be able to squat or deadlift Mm. which is different than a straight arm deadlift or a a front squat front loading is so underrated and that's something that's so applicable for any kind of sport in general too too. yeah in real life like that's why i mean going through any program that i did thankfully a lot of the coaches you know were receptive to that and so we did a lot of front squats we did a lot of power cleans and so lots of driving forces in front because you know you're on the 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 forefoot of you know your foot and and you're you're in certain positions where you have to squat down but like really you have to be responsive so you can't be back on your heel mm-hmm. so i mean there's it's all specific right so if you want to train you can improve you know performance wise you can improve you know muscular wise um, so that was one of the things like I had to learn then to activate my posterior chain and like go through that process, you know, after sports more effectively. Well, that's, and that's, that's my point. Like why, why are some of these movements so valued in these other resistance training disciplines? Well, it's because those disciplines have identified the, the most effective exercises. Mm-hmm. So you don't need to learn all the Olympic lifting lifts. You don't need to learn all the you know power lifting techniques. You don't need to learn all the kettlebell techniques or all the club or mace training techniques or all the bodybuilding techniques. Just look at you know you know your favorite stuff, but then look at these other sports or these other disciplines. Find the movements that they find that they value the most. Apply those to your your workout and watch your body respond. Because mm-hmm. again, I'm learning this with like a zercher squat. I never did zercher squats consistently. I did I threw them in here and there, but I never did them consistently. I'm getting now up to a point where I can Zercher squat with three plates, which when I first did Zercher squats, which is maybe six weeks ago, so we're uh, six to eight weeks ago, so two months max. Two months max, I was doing this with 135, 165 pounds, not that much weight. I had to learn it. Now I'm doing 315. What do you think's happened to my body in that period of time, yeah, it's right? It's responding. It's responding. So Learn these movements that, and again, I did this early with some of the old school strength training exercises because at the time, you're talking about the 90s and early 2000s, if you wanted to work out your legs and build your legs, everybody, all the bodybuilding magazine said hack squat on the machine, leg press, leg extension, leg curl, maybe a back squat, and that's pretty much it. I'm reading these old strength training books and in, in, in manuals that from the 50s and 60s and some of them from even before. And what are they saying? Back squat, front squat, hack squat with the barbell, sissy squats. I'm looking at the, all these movements and I started implementing those and my legs just fucking blew up. They responded. Yeah. And there's wisdom. There's a lot of wisdom in that kind of stuff. What do you think it is that, I mean, causes people to just to rebuke all those types of movements? It's, it's what is- they're hard. They, yeah, and they require yes. a lot of skill. That's 100%. And what, it what is. I mean by hard is I don't necessarily mean they're hard like they make you sweat and all that stuff. Because you can do that with a lot of movies. I can take mm. somebody and I can make them sweat and puke with no equipment whatsoever. And, and you know, I could have them just do some burpees or whatever. If they're hard in the sense that they're hard to do because they require a lot of skill. There's a lot more risk involved too. Yeah. Because you know, it could get away from you if you don't have the proper mm-hmm. mechanics and you have to really learn how to stabilize your body and keep certain positions tight and have isometric contraction at the same time. Bro, it was fi- if fitness went mainstream. That's what happened. Gyms used to be places where people who knew how to fucking work out went. That's what it, what it, what it was. If you if you didn't know how to work out, you didn't go to a gym. No, that's a good point. That's like if you compare it to any other sport or anything like that, you have like you go to a basketball court cuz you like to play basketball yeah. and you know how to play basketball. Yeah, you yeah. wouldn't go to a, some, you know, well-known park that all the yeah. players go to and play and show up and try and play with yeah. them if you've never played before. No, you get dunked. But <laughs> like, right. Yeah. 
But it, when you think about it, that's kind of what what we see right now is you see these commercial gyms that want everybody to come, yeah. and so so they make it all easy. Yeah, that's what they did, and it, it was the machines. It was really and they the, go because they have to be yeah, there. It was the it was the machine revolution because initially yeah. machines were created. Some of the first machines and gyms were were made by the gym owners. So like Joe Gold of Gold's Gym, uh, you know, uh, you know he made he, he made machines. Um, you had some, you know, other, you know, uh, Jack Lane made his. So Arthur Jones of Nautilus, he was one of the first like commercial machine makers. Twenty four hour fitness, which is the, uh, I mean, let, let's be plain, a hundred percent. This is the truth. They are the they're the guys that they're the ones that created the industry. They really, or at least they're the ones that made it super profitable or or, or taught they created everybody's. the commercial gym model. They they're the ones that I don't know if they didn't invent it cuz there were other models that were out there but they were they're the trailblazers. Yeah, like, but they're they, the ones that were memorable. Yeah, they're Microsoft for tech, you know what I mean? Right. Like the first ones to fucking make it happen. And 24 Hour Fitness wasn't called 24 Hour Fitness when it first started. It was called 24 Hour Nautilus and that's mm-hmm. because it partnered with Nautilus uh, equipment and it had a bunch of Nautilus equipment in their gyms and that's oh. what they did. And that's how you got people to come into your gym who never worked out before. Otherwise, what are you going to do? You have a bunch of people coming in without a bunch. Uh, Otherwise, you'd have to invest in a lot of trainers. But imagine if you opened up a gym with a bunch of squat racks and a bunch of old school shit, and then you just let people do their own stuff. When did when when did when did that light bulb go off for you when you realized like that this was how this gym was made? In other words, like wow, this really wasn't designed to get people the best this whole gym is not even designed to get people the best results it's really just to accommodate the everybody so everybody would come in i knew that really early on oh you did yeah because i remember when the switch went off for me but it wasn't for at least that's about year four everything is all safety driven no it went it, it was early on for me because uh at a young age a couple times i had my dad drive me to a powerhouse gym or like a, like one of these old school bodybuilding gyms. And I remember I'd walk in and I'd be like, this is way... And yes, there were lots of machines and stuff, but the environment was different. There was you know people using chalk, especially Powerhouse. I don't know if you guys remember Powerhouse back in the day. That was a like that was a that was a, an iron dungeon, and then I and then I'd go to twenty four hour fitness, and you could still have an ex. You have these, you know, you have similar equipment. You can make your workout happen. It was just a totally different environment. And then I remember being like, oh okay, there's a little bit of a difference here. And then of course. I, you know, I worked in the gym at the age of 18 and I knew, you know, like we got to make this attractive to people. I mean, let's be honest of all the shit in the gym, the stuff that's going to give people the best results, the best short-term and long-term results is the dumbbells and barbells Mm -hmm. period. Where, where was all the money spent in the gym? Yeah. Cardio. Yeah. yeah. Cardio and machines. Cardio and then second was machines. Yeah. It's like uh it's like casinos. And then like, actually probably, where's all the money in casinos? Probably the slot third, machines. third yeah. classes. Yeah, that's it. In yeah. classes. That's uh, true. Yeah. Yeah. It, like I said, it's just like uh like 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 uh, uh casinos remember, are all like slot machines. Are scared. Right? They they go in there, they don't know what the fuck they're doing. It, right. it didn't go off for me until I remember um like you have rows of cardio, rows were you of there, rows of cardio. Were you there all the way till two yeah, I think you were there for when I was at Hillsdale, I think you were at Santa Teresa, so I think you were there for this. Maybe you remember this. Uh, you might have been gone by then. But for me, it, the light bulb went off when I started to notice how the company followed trends. And we our gym would start to shape or change, or we would, we would offer something because there's competitors out mm-hmm. there that were doing something that I knew damn well was trendy and not really getting people results for circuit example. training. Yes. Mm-hmm. When curves, and this is what did it for me, was when curves was exploding and was starting to take business from 24-Hour Fitness, I remember we brought out the Express Zone. Oh, yeah. And the Express Zone was basically a curves inside of our gym where we had You 12. should explain curves for people who don't yeah, know. Yeah, so if you don't know what curves is, it's well, first of all, it's, it's one of the largest, fastest-growing fitness chains in the world ever. And it was, it was targeted towards women. Uh, and it was supposed to be built as a non-intimidating environment. It was like 20 or 30 minute workout. Yes, it was a 20, 30 minute workout. It was a circle of machines. So they had the, they had it set up to where it was this big, there was no mirrors in there. There was music playing, a little scale inside there. And then a, a, a series of about 12, 15, maybe 20 machines in a big circle. And it was designed to, you take, you take these classes and you just you go from machine to machine to machine to machine for 20 minutes. And then you're done. And then you're done. And uh, it was exploding, man. People were opening them up everywhere. And I remember- I it almost was, bought one. It was starting to cut into revenue from excellent. our business. And so 
but, but I remember being the guy understanding what they were doing and how they were marketing to people and knowing that it was bullshit and knowing that like this is not really helping these people. It's literally just playing into their insecurities and giving them what they want. And I remember I lost a lot of respect for us when we not only did we because it's one thing to offer it, which I'm all for, right? Offering it as like, you know, if you love curves and you like that, maybe here we have it here. You have this these mm-hmm. machines if you want to start with that. And then hopefully we can then convert them over to lifting weights and doing things like they should. But they put a lot of pressure on us managers at that time to push it. You know, mm-hmm. to push it and to train people and to teach it. One of the dumbest ideas that oh, they ever I remember. One it. of the big, big flops of twenty four hour fitness. Oh, it was a it was a really tough thing. Huge for, waste of money for them. I don't even think it did, did no, it do it anything did, for it them. It did terrible. Oh. It did oh, terrible. Stupid. It did terrible and just following along with the people well, you complaining because you see what they're doing there, now, right? What they're doing. So you're seeing all gyms now doing this. Not so not just a knock on two four. I mean, everybody's doing it. They're just trying to compete. It's business, so I understand. Uh, but you know now CrossFit is cutting into mm-hmm. all these commercial gyms, and so what are you seeing at all these commercial gyms now? Look at Golds is converted to. Look at Twenty Four American Barbell. They're all starting to provide these kind of unconventional layouts that mm-hmm. allow people who love CrossFit and to train that way can do their CrossFit type workouts inside these commercial gyms. You have these monkey uh, climbing racks and stuff. And yeah. Like platforms are. They actually have tire flipping machines. Have you seen them? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> tire like, flipping machines. Yeah. Have you seen this, Justin? Oh, that's the laziest thing. It's, yeah, it's, it's a half tire. It flips it's, this way, flips that <laughs> way. It's a half tire. <laughs> and you can adjust the weight too, so it's like a 200 yep. or a 400 pound. Now, here's the thing. That's so lame. Here's the thing, and this is what, this is what made me angry too about, about 20 for our fitness is and i really do hope and, and by the way i have i have so much love for them because that's where i learned everything so i know i'm hammering on them right now but they also taught me quite a bit but 24 hour fitness used to be the trendsetter and at yes. some point they became the trend follower oh such a mm. fucking great point. and that got on my fucking nerves yeah. because you know here's the thing there's nothing wrong with following a trend if it's like if it's legit yeah. so like the functional training trend with you know with gra- with the grass field and you know sleds and stuff like that i don't mind that because there's real benefit to that people are going to get real benefit but the reason why they're doing it is they're following someone else right the curves trend that was fucking stupid and anybody in fitness who understood fitness all they had to do and i wish companies would do this i wish 24 fitness did this back then just ask your fitness people yeah. stop asking your marketers right. ask your fitness trainers hey trainers do you think we should do this? Do you think people will get better results? Are you gonna Are you gonna be on board? And every trainer would be like, "No, that's stupid." Yep. Yep. If and then if you you see that, you know it would have been a waste of money. But they followed that stupid circuit training trend with machines, which are already in the gym. If someone wants to do a circuit, they could fucking do a circuit with it. They're already there. No, they had to organize them a particular way, put express zone over it, and then tell everybody to do it. So stupid. Big waste of time and money. Dude, don't you see that though with any big monument? business like that the, they just get like so big where they get into this trap where now they're just trying to find other things to include even though they led the way they innovated mm-hmm. and then it's like innovation once you get to a certain size i always tend to see like companies it's really hard to maintain that innovative edge well because you, you switch priorities that's yeah, why because now you're trying to feed into well, your, yes. your it's, shareholders it's and because they took their finger off the pulse of fitness that's yeah. it fitness at its core is about getting people better results, making them healthier, stronger, uh, it, you know, uh, creating community because gyms are about community. Always have been since day one. Otherwise, you work out by yourself. But if you go to a gym, one of the big benefits is or pluses that a lot of gyms forgot, and again, CrossFit capitalized on, is the community. Keep your finger on the pulse and you'll be ahead of the curve all day long. Take your finger off the pulse and you're fucked. And that's again one of the things that they did. Like they looked at the, the they looked at the fitness model, took their finger off the pulse, and what did they say? We have 400 locations. We've got more gyms than anybody. All we need to do is put the prices up on the wall, charge less than everybody, and we'll take all the members and we'll put everybody out of business. Er, wrong. That's not what fitness is all about. Well, it's partially. And wrong. that drove the price of all gym memberships down to the point now where. A 30,000, 40,000, 50,000 square foot gym will cost you 20 bucks a month. Mm. That's not that's not a very good business model if you ask me. Back when when I was managing gyms in 1999, 24 Fitness was charging $45 a month and people were paying that shit. 
Today, you couldn't charge 45 bucks a month yeah. for that kind of a membership. Well, I think most of them, I mean, and I saw this, I was actually doing uh, cardio this weekend in, um, in 24 Hour Fitness. I don't go there that often. And I see they're they're making the move into the virtual world for sure. So they're they're they have a very interactive app. Oh, interesting. Yeah, and it's, it's and I haven't dove all the way through it. I just kind of downloaded, looked at it, and I was watching the TVs up uh, when I was doing cardio and kind of wa- paying attention to its features and everything it does. But you know they're 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 moving that they have to though. I mean I think that it the, it's what I mean personally what I saw. Fuck, it's now, I mean, we've been doing this for almost four years. I left two years before that. I mean, I saw it like six, seven years ago. I I remember kind of like evaluating our fitness business and going, man, you know, I see all these other companies and I see what's happening in tech and I kind of see how so much has changed and evolved. And really, the fitness game really hadn't evolved and changed. I mean, the, and this is before CrossFit, right? This was like, you know, when I was seeing this happen, I was like, man, we really have been doing kind of the same thing, the same gym model. 24 Fitness really has led the way like as far as like how you do how you do business. And it had been working because no one else had came out and, and done a better model. But I really think that, you know, it's going to be tough for some of these, these commercial gyms to hang with the future of how health and fitness will be done. It feels like they're starting to get back on track a little bit. I've been meeting more trainers that work uh, at 24 and people that work there and stuff. And if, th- I- am I wrong, Adam? I don't know. Are you still pretty connected? Yeah, I'm still pretty connected. I feel like they're, they're starting to move in a good direction. Well, they, what they did, or was they've it, been moving in that they direction. They tried what they did really a big mistake they made about six, seven years ago was, or maybe even longer now was thinking that, um, you and you, you briefly mentioned it, that people could just put a price up there and then people would buy. Um, and, that could, I think, in fitness, that is couldn't be further from the truth because of all things that you sell, um, it's one of the only businesses. It's the only one I can think of off the top of my head that you're selling something that's not tangible. Mm-hmm. Every other sales business that you do, it's a dream. You walk away mm-hmm. with something in your hand. You get something for spending thousands of dollars. Well, when people buy fucking a trainer or buy fitness. You walk away with nothing. You know, they're nothing. buying work. Yeah, exactly. They're <laughs> buying more work, more discipline, more sacrifice Thank that you. they have to do. So I think it takes a very uh, talented person who not only can communicate that to another person, but then also motivate and inspire them to follow through that mm-hmm. goal. And so I think they made a huge mistake when they started to devalue uh, the value of people that have the um, art of communication that that could do that could communicate very well and that were talented in sales and they thought oh we could just pay these guys half the money mm-hmm. and just get me just we provide just automate them. this yeah automate it yeah. make it so easy and so I think that happened I see them trying to get back to some old ways as far as teaching sales and things like that but I don't know man it's it looks really I mean we'll find out because I I don't know if I told you guys this already or not but. Um, you know, I've got Brianna, she's reached out to, uh, I think five or six of the, uh, CEOs of some of the biggest fitness franchises oh, and companies. I'd love to talk to them. And I, I've been There's wanting to be some fun conversations. Yeah, no, I really, I mean, cause I mean, the one on the top of my list would be Mark Masteroff would love to talk to Mark. He, and I still think he's, I mean, he's the godfather. Well, he's actually, he's less on my list just because I, I already love and respect him and, and what he's doing and what he's done. I actually want to talk to like, um, you know, Planet Fitness, the current 24-hour fitness person right now, mm. uh, LA Fitness. Uh, these are some of the crunch. Like these Greg guys. Glassman. I want to talk to, yeah, that would be a great one. I would love that. I, w- I would like to talk to some of these guys and just kind of hear where where they are going currently right now, where they see the future of fitness. and Because, kind of, you know, I'm, I'm staying in my own lane. Like, I haven't been I haven't been in that space in a long time. I'm, I'm not talking to the CEO, and I'm, I'm a firm believer in, like, you know, when you're somebody at the at the bottom and you and you just get the trickle down effect, you think you know everything that's going on. Yeah, it's good like, point. It's just like politics. Like you know, there's a lot. Of, there could be a lot of moves that you know when you're moving a ship that big. It's not like a oh hey the market's going this way. We should go this way. All mm-hmm. of a sudden, you you got to slowly turn the ship. And so I'd like to talk to some of these CEOs and see if they actually see the writing on the wall and if they're already making moves to move in that direction. So I think it'd be a really interesting conversation for us to have on the show. Yeah, I'd like to see, I'd, I'd love to talk to them because it's uh, it's it's an interesting time. Uh, when it, especially when it comes to gyms, it's there's the competition is far, it's different now. What I see exploding a lot more are small, small facilities, small yeah. type 
specialized types of gyms. You know, that started happening about 10 years ago where I would see, you know, yoga studio, Pilates studio, you know, circuit training studio. Like people started working out in these places versus the big impersonal type you know, health club. Well, the crazy because so it brings the community back. Well, yeah, the, the you key know, would be how lost do you, that a bit with the well, f- with the you know commercial setting. Well, here's the thing: like the the gyms that I ran had that vibe in them, and they were massive. Yeah, of course. The but, staff creates that. Like, yeah. really, here's the thing: like, yes, gyms have equipment. Yes, they got to have like cool stuff and amenities. I get all that, but it, the staff makes such a tremendous difference. Yeah, in, but it's it's tough to build that culture when you've created a culture where you're. F- finding less talented people to run these facilities yeah. because you're putting less uh, effort or emphasis on people with and paying them less. actual talent. Yeah, with talent <laughs> yeah. and that actually are are good at developing these these other leaders or creating that culture inside the facility. So that's why these these small boxes cuz I see a lot of these small boxes having success and they're really not that good of leaders themselves either. It's just that when you only have a hundred something members, it's pretty easy to create some sort of a community, like Justin's saying, yeah. with that few of people. It's it's inevitable if there's only a hundred people that go to this CrossFit gym that at one time you're probably gonna end up meeting every member. Yeah. They like or, do the work for you, right? Right, exactly. Because they, they come in, hey Sally, Abs- hey, you know, exact, hey John. That's yeah. exactly what I see right now. And I, I mean I was a part of this at uh, Orange Theory. Now I was when I was at Orange Theory uh for two years and uh the two years that I was there, we were the number one facility in the entire company. And and I knew why, you know, I knew that I knew that we had created an incredible uh, culture inside that facility, but I also knew that a lot of people that were there and that were running it didn't really fully understand that. They kind of understood it, but they didn't. They didn't really understand. They took it for granted. Yeah, they took it for granted, and you know, I left that place, and I don't. I know they're not the number one anymore. I don't know where they're at now, but a lot of these guys that have these small facilities. The, like you said, Justin, they have the members are already meeting each other and interactive, and it's small enough and quaint enough that it kind of naturally creates a, uh, an environment like that. And that's why, like you know, the real challenge is: can you take something that small and can you scale it to what Sal's talking about, mm-hmm. a big facility? Because there's so many moving parts with that. You're probably not going to meet every member at a, a place that big, and so how do you make it feel like Cheers, or how do you give it that type mm-hmm. of an environment with that large of a building? Mm-hmm. It takes it takes some real talent to no, do that. The bu- the boxes need to figure out to how to increase the value of what they're doing because the market has changed so much now to where if a person walks into a 30,000 square foot 24 hour fitness anything over 20 something dollars an hour, you know a, a month they're going to be like oh my god that's so expensive that same person will spend five times as much on a cell phone bill or five times as much on going to the movies every month or whatever so it's really not the money it isn't 50 bucks a month most people can afford it's just that they don't see the value in it anymore because it's been so devalued yeah and, and people so they are inherently ch- lazy they yeah. need to change the conversation they need to change because yeah. I, I tell you something right now if if you were spending 150 bucks a month but you were going to a place three days a week you enjoyed going to you really loved the atmosphere you also got fit and healthy from it that would be 150 dollars you would never take out of your budget that would always be Boom, 150 bucks a month for the gym. And 150 bucks for a gym membership is just sounds super freaking expensive. But if you create that kind of value, people will spend it. So they need to change the conversation a little bit. And that's going to be a tough one. That's tough because it's easy to go down in price, real hard to go back up. And once now that they've done that, it's going to be a little bit of an uphill battle. I mean, I really think the future is what we're building right here because if you if you were to partner, like let's say we were to partner with like a 24-hour fitness what we're building virtually is perfect to complement a company like that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. to where your your members now have all these resources of all these different programs based off of whatever their goals are and even to the point where we have Prime, Prime Pro or the ass- assessment piece. I mean, a lot of uh, when we first started this has been modeled after you know the gym. It's like we just basically have created or we're creating a virtual gym in a sense. I mean, you, we're the, our community are the people that are listening right mm-hmm. now. You know, this is mm-hmm. our community. Our way of well, building forum. value with our community is by providing content and value for their lives on a regular basis to the point where they feel, oh my God, I'll buy any program you guys put out because mm-hmm. of how much value you, you provide from us. You, so there's our culture, you know, yeah. and you, there's You know, community. you bring up a good point. Do... Are there any big gym organizations that have... Uh, that are connected to... 
like influential, powerful social media or podcasts or anything like that? Well, I think 24 is going to move that way. Yeah. You think so? I de- yeah. That would be smart. Didn't it's, they do li- something with Lewis House? They did. He's in, He's on their app, and, and uh, I saw him on the TV when I was inside there, too. I thought, oh, there's our buddy right there. I yeah. mm-hmm. sent him over a text message. Hey, dude. <laughs> What's See, that? you know what would be cool, and this is just me racking my brain with that idea, like a, a, a company like that would be smart you know, like these forums that we've created, this really tight knit community, this is literally like our gym. Mm-hmm. Like we've, we've already created a gym yeah. of mind pumpers, you know, like pump heads and, you know, having that same, you could foster a very similar community like that and manage it, you know, just from your gym and have everybody communicate, you know, they just have to have direction. They have to have, everybody has to be mm. in line and have one purpose and, and goal and then have everybody, you know, help each other out. That's interesting. Well, look, check it out. If you go to your app store, you can get the Mind Pump Media app, and then you can search specific topics among all of our 750-plus episodes. So if you want to look up fat loss, if you want to look up creatine, if you want to look up muscle building, uh, fasting, whatever, you just type it in the search function. It'll pull up all the episodes where we cover that particular topic. And the best part about that app, it's absolutely free. Go get it. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.